Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Let's take a look at the new user interfaces for the uh, Select and Transform panes. And uh, we'll work with this uh, map here that has uh, two vector layers. It's called Mexico Map. One of the layers uh, shows Mexico as uh, areas. The other one shows uh, lines that uh, extend uh, in and out of that uh, you know, radial point right there. And uh, these are directional lines, so we can, we've put an arrowhead on them so we can see which way the, the, the line is pointing. And uh, let's start with uh, uh, doing some transforms. And first, let's take a look at the, uh, the, the table behind the Mexico Lines table. I'm going to right-click on Mexico Lines and choose Open Table. And then I'll Control-click the tab to automatically dock that uh, table down here below. So now we have a view of the main map, and we also have a view of the Mexico Lines table right there. And the first thing we'll do is we'll use the Transform pane to figure out uh, what, are, what are the bearings on these different lines. And uh, with, I'll click the Mexico map, put the focus there, and that automatically sets the focus for the Transform pane as well. Now in the Transform pane, I can click, uh, let's uh, eliminate that. Now in the Transform pane, I can click what layer I want to use in the map, either Mexico or Mexico lines. We'll choose Mexico lines. And uh, what I want to do is I want to compute the bearing. The Transform templates here, uh, many of them have uh, lots of different functionality in them. So if I can't remember which one has bearing in it, what I'll do is I'll enter bearing, B-E-A-R-I-N-G, into the filter box here. And that helps me find it. That tells me, okay, there's here in the most recently used uh, item that I use, the copy bearing, and also here in the copy template. So let's get rid of that. And uh, I'll double click in the copy. And uh, what I can do is I can choose what part of the uh, geometry I want to use, the entire geometry or just certain e extracts from it. And I want to use the bearing. So what I want to do is I want to copy the bearing in units of degrees, and I want to put the result, let's say, in, into a new field. I can choose uh, what I want to do, and the new field, we'll call it bearing. So the trend template will automatically add a table to the Mexico, add a field to the Mexico lines table. So I want to get the bearing in degrees and put the result into a bearing, new bearing field. Click transform. And there you can see the bearing uh, appears right there. It automatically ca calculated it for the lines. Let's say I want to find something else about the line. Let's say, uh, let's say I want to find the length. And I want to get the length in uh, meters, and I want to put in a field called length. And let's click Transform, and that'll generate a new field called length, and it'll put the, 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 you know, the uh, computed length of the line right in there. Now what's neat about this is this is designed, since a lot of tr select and transform things are iterative processes, uh, and the idea is to not have you to, not to require reentering all these different parameters here if it's just a simple change you want to make. So let's say uh, what I want to do is I want to store the length not as uh, meters, but let's say as kilometers. So what I'll do is I'll choose a unit of measure uh, out of all these incredibly long list of things that Manifold understands, and I want to put the result into an existing field called length. And so now, same deal, but I want to use unit measure kilometers, and I want to put the result into that field length. Click Transform, and now I have the uh, length in kilometers. Let's say I want to uh, put that in miles, and I'll choose miles. It's, it comes in, it's off screen there. So I want the length in miles put into the result of length. Click Transform, and there we have the length in uh, miles. Uh, that's uh, really super. And now let's see how the Select Pane works. The Select Pane works in a similar way. The idea is to, uh, with the focus on the Mexico map, you can choose what layer you want to operate on. Let's choose Mexico Lines. And it has a list of transforms here, a list of select templates, rather. It appears as, as the most frequently, uh, last, uh, most recently used uh, trend templates. If we want, we can pin those, one of those, to the uh, list so that it'll, it'll persist even through manifold sessions. It'll, anytime we open it up in a, you know, with a, a field that has a, a number, numeric field, that'll, that'll have this option of searching, go directly to between. But let's go, let's do this. We Let's click search, and uh, we want to search on the bearing field in Mexico lines. And we want a condition that is between, uh, let's see, uh, let's call it a 10 degrees and uh, 90. So that should, that should select this line right up there. Uh, click select, and the action is going to be replace selection. So click select, and there, that's the line right there. Let's add another one between, uh, say, uh, 90, let's say between 10 and uh, uh, 180. That should add one more. And what I'll do is I'll choose, uh, well, let's choose add to selection. And there it is. Now let's uh, let's subtract from the selection. Let's uh, subtract something between 90 and 180, and the action will be subtract from selection. So that'll get rid of this line right here. Click select, and there it's subtracted. Uh, if we see how bearings work in manifold, bearings on on this half from 0 to 180 degrees are plus, and for on this half are uh, uh, minus. Uh, one degree to uh, minus 179 degrees. So if we want to select this guy right here, uh, the way that works is, uh, and notice by the way, when I clicked in the Mexico table here, uh, 
this uh, select panel and the transform panel switch to the context of the Mexico table. When I click back in the Mexico map, uh, the transform pane and the select pane switched back to the context of the map and they remembered what was going on previously. So you don't have to keep entering and re-entering all this stuff. So anyway, uh, let's select this guy here, this line right here, which is minus 147. So that would be at least uh, uh, minus uh, 150 and at most uh, minus 90. And uh, let's give an action to add to the selection. Click select and there it is. If I want to redo that, but redo that with a replace selection, I just change that. Everything else stays the same. Click select and now I've replaced the selection. So you can see how the persistence of these uh, different parameters here, both in the selection pane and the transform pane, uh, make for extremely fast workflow. Uh, let's uh, select uh, here in the Mexico map. Let's, uh, let's change this. Uh, the the subject uh, layer from Mexico lines to Mexico and um, what I want to do is for the field this shows me all the uh, numeric fields and uh, let's open up the Mexico map Mexico map table the Mexico drawing table rather and to do that I'll right click on Mexico and choose open table I'll dock that table down below so this gives me all the fields in the Mexico table uh, and what I want to do is I want to work with the geom field uh, on that so uh, Let's choose uh, Mexico, okay, and let's choose the geom field. And I can do a, ver a variety of things in the geom field in terms of uh, selection. For example, I can search for the area, and the area will be in, uh, let's use square kilometers, I'll enter kilometer here. So now we're talking about area in square kilometers, and let's say area that is uh, greater than or equal to, uh, uh, let's say 20,000 square kilometers. Click select. And that's uh, a lot of Mexico. There's just a few uh, regions that aren't, uh, let's say, 50,000 kilometers. Greater than or equal to 50,000 kilometers would be those. And greater than or equal to uh, 90,000 uh, kilometers would be those. Let's say I want to know greater than or equal to 90,000 square miles. So let's change the unit measure to mile. And everything else stays equal. And click Select. And now I've just selected everything greater than or equal to uh, uh, 90,000 uh, square miles. All right. Um, and here in the Mexico map, I'll choose Control A to uh, deselect everything. Uh, let's do some transforms. Let's do some fancier transforms. And what I'll do is this: I have this drawing that I created earlier called Mexico Cutter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Mexico Cutter and I'm going to drag it and drop it into the map. And that's the layer that shows this uh, triangular shape that I created earlier. And uh, let's change the uh, transparency of that here in the layers pane to 50%. You can see how it's, by the way, convenient to have a bunch of panes that are open and docked in various. Uh, uh, locations and now let's uh, let's play with the transform and what I'll do is I'm going to uh, cut Mexico lines and I'm going to work with the geom and I'm going to work with the clip so let's uh, change the clip and I want to take the geom field in Mexico and I want to clip it with uh, Mexico cutter and I want to put the result into uh, let's put the result into a uh, new field and I want to put the new field into a geom into a new field called uh, let's call that uh, Geom clip, and I want and I automatically want to create a new drawing that uses that new uh, geom field called uh, Mex Mexico Geom Clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip uh, Mexico with the objects in Mexico Cutter, which is this uh, triangular shaped area right there, and we're going to put the results into a new field called Geom Clipped, and then to visualize that we're going to automatically create a new drawing based on that new field. And notice again, I can uh, change things here in the uh, table. And when I come back here to Mexico map, I didn't lose any of the context. Everything is there exactly where the way I left it. So uh, let's go for it. Let's click transform. And that creates uh, automatically creates a new field called geom clipped in the drawing and puts the results into that. And it creates this uh, drawing right here called geom clipped in which we drag and drop it into the, uh, uh, into the map. You can see geom clipped is right there. Let's turn off the Mexico lines. So we're just looking at geom clip, and we can turn off the cutter. There's the cutter. And geom clip, let's style that. Let's uh, make the areas, uh, let's make them uh, this color right there. All right. Uh, and uh, so you can see how what it did is it, it clipped these part portions out. Now, let's change things. Let's uh, not keep the inner part. Let's keep the, let's do the outer part. And uh, instead of putting, if we try to do that, geom clip already exists. Name is already in use, so we can't do that. So let's, uh, Let's tell it to recycle that same name. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Mexico, clip it with this cutter object, 
uh, but we're not going to keep the inner part. Instead, we're going to get do the outer part. We're going to put the result into the existing field called geom clipped. Click transform, and there. What happened is that we put the new geometry into this geom clip field, and we already have a drawing called geom clip that is based on this geom clip field, so it automatically updated like that. Uh, let's uh, click here on Mexico Cutter, and let's uh, create a, a new area. There's the area right there. Click the Save Changes off screen. So let's go back here to the Clip Transform, and we're going to clip area with Mexico Cutter, and we're going to keep the inner part, and the result is going to go into the Geom Clip field. Click Transform, and you can see how, how that worked. You can see that uh, this triangle here clipped out these portions of the of the uh, of the uh, Mexico uh, drawing, and this triangle here clipped out these portions. Uh, let's uh, not keep the inner part. Let's uh, let's do all the rest of the outer part. Click transform, and now we have just the outer parts, which are not in those two areas that are clipped. Uh, let me show you one other thing that's pretty cool here. What we can do is, uh, and with the focus on the Mexico cutter layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click this uh, uh, cutter object right there, this triangle right there, and now back here in the transform, we're going to clip Mexico. We're going to clip with Mexico Cutter, but we're going to clip only with the selection part, and we're going to keep the inner part. And let's do that. So there, we've just we've just uh, clipped that part. So you can see, instead of using this clipping drawing, clipping triangle here, we're only going to use this clipping selection here. Okay, uh, we can go back and uh, deselect uh, this area here in Mexico Cutter and uh, select this one there. And uh, let's change this to uh, not keep just the inner part. So we're going to select cut everything out and keep only the outer parts. Click Transform. And there, that's that's what we expected to happen. Uh, so uh, if we'd like, we can actually uh, transform uh, uh, areas that are inside the selection as well. For example, we could click Transform Selection Only, and that would only transform selected areas within Mexico. Uh, let's not uh, let's not do that. We'll, uh, I think we've done enough for just one video. You can see how many different combinations we can do. There's a very short introduction to the Select and Transform. Uh, Paints. We've just barely uh, scratched the surface of the many, many capabilities that they have, and uh, the many uh, wonderful ways in which uh, uh, these uh, various uh, uh, various uh, facilities can be used. For example, uh, uh, I can't resist doing uh, uh, just one more thing. Let's take a look at the bearing here, and the bearing will apply to uh, lines. Notice how, in addition to the units, we can ch to change units. For example, arc minutes, arc degrees, arc seconds, degrees, radians. We can also change how uh, things are measured. Uh, what's nice about this new build is it has a whole lot of internal infrastructure. For example, we can choose to use geodetic or auto uh, measurement, and uh, that will automatically switch uh, the measurements that are used between, uh, say, Euclidean plane uh, computation on uh, projections that use uh, uh, linear measures and uh, geodetic uh, uh, computations on uh, latitude and longitude, which are degree-based. Uh, or if we'd like, we can always force geodetic in. Uh, what's a geodetic measurement? That's actually measuring a bearing or a line or an area over the surface of the ellipsoid. So that's just uh, one of the many, many, many small details that, that are done here using ultra-high precision. All this works in the free manifold viewer. Uh, it's remarkable that all this stuff works in uh, the $95 manifold system. So uh, uh, get yourself a copy of manifold or download the free viewer. There's uh, no catches to viewer. Or there's no adware. There's no uh, advertising of any kind. No attempt to upsell. There's no... Uh, request for donation or anything like that. It's just uh, free software that works forever uh, and uh, does wonderful things. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Thanks for watching and goodbye from Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.